What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and the 2019 NFL Draft is fastly approaching, ladies and gentlemen. And you feel a real sense of optimism in the air, or you're a Jags fan that feels nothing but pessimism all year long. But either way, we can have the excitement, the sheer disbelief of what the Jags are going to do, because none of us have any idea until Roger Goodell goes onto that platform and announces our 2019 first round selection. So we already ranked every single first round pick from worst to best. We ranked every second and third round pick from worst to best, ladies and gentlemen. But today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be ranking every single Jaguars draft class from worst to best, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is ranking every single Jaguars draft class from worst to best. 2013. In 2013, the Jaguars decided to take a chance on offensive lineman Luke Jokel. And Luke Jokel did not work out for the Jacksonville Jaguars. In fact, he hasn't worked out basically his entire NFL career. And topped that off in the second round, the Jaguars selected Jonathan Ciprian, your boy's least favorite Jaguar player of all time. A terrible safety, terrible at taking angles, and he's now playing for the Titans where, yes, they beat the Jags, but that's a terrible place to play, so I'm glad he's there. And then we had Dwayne Grotz, who was a starting corner for a while, but never anything too special. Ace Sanders, who was always a wide receiver that was in the rotation, but nothing ever too special. Denard Robinson, former quarterback turned running back, he had his resurgence in the AAF. Same with Josh Evans, who they took also in 2013. They took Jeremy Harris and Demetrius McRae with their 7th round selection. And without a doubt, this is the worst draft class that the Jaguars have ever assembled. 1999. Though this is a memorable year for Jaguar fans because they reached the AFC Championship game, the draft was anything but... No real standout players were drafted in the 1999 season. Fernando Bryant being the only notable player on this list. Larry Smith in the second round. Anthony Cicero in offensive guard in the third round. Kevin Landolt. Jason Kraft. Amorilius Leroy D. Monarocola. And Chris White in the seventh round. So just un recognizable players and unrecognizable faces is what prevents this draft from going any higher. Of course, it was one of the best seasons in Jaguar history, but definitely one of the worst draft hauls in Jaguar history. 2001. In 2001, the Jaguars selected stout defensive tackle Marcus Strahd with that pick, and he's one of the best defenders in Jaguar history, one of the best defensive linemen in Jaguar history. So that was a solid first-round selection. However, after that, no real impact players. You had Marquise Marcis Williams, an offensive tackle, Eric Westmoreland, James Boyd, David Leverton, a punter, Chad Ward, Anthony Denman, Marlon McRae, Richmond Flowers III, and Randy Chevrier. So again, the Jags selected one of their best defensive tackles in history, but again, not a lot of notable players after that. The Jags need to hit, you need to hit on like your second and third round picks to make it onto this list. And unfortunately in 2001, the Jags only hit on their first round pick, which is a lot different than what they do today where they usually just hit on the late round picks. But Marcus Strahd, a good player, one of the all-time Jaguar greats. Unfortunately, his draft class just was not that terrific. 2011. Now, this draft class probably should have been up there, maybe even higher as one of the worst of all time, but it's almost just kind of funny looking at these guys. They are, they are staples of a Jaguar organization that just went downhill, so there are some notable names, but notable isn't really the word you would use to describe this bunch of players. Starting off with Blaine Gabbert, the experience, the quarterback that we selected to replace David Garrard and hopefully down the line take us to the promised land. I'm not sure how that actually ended up going out. But, you know, you can look it up. I'm sure Blaine Gabbert took the Jags to the Super Bowl at least once, especially with the protection of Will Rackley, who was their second-round selection in offensive guard, who was also just terrific. Cecil Shorts, the uh, 
one of the better Jaguar receivers, and he was the number one receiver for a long, long time. He did always have a lot of drops, but during a dark era of Jacksonville Jaguar football, Cecil Shorts was a bright spot, and then Chris Prasinski and Rod Isaac were the next selection. The Jags only had five picks in this draft, and they didn't hit on any of them, except for maybe Cecil Shorts. 2007. In 2007, the Jaguars selected Reggie Nelson, who has had a good career in the NFL. And as it stands now, I believe he's still a free agent. I don't think he's just quite retired. But he made his name more so with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Oakland Raiders. But he was, again, a very, very solid safety for the Jags and a very solid safety career. So you can't really knock on that first-round selection. Justin Durant who is a linebacker for us for a good amount of time. You know, he was a good tackler, just he wasn't the best in pass coverage. He wasn't the best all-around linebacker. Mike Sims-Walker snuck him in the third round, who was a fan favorite at the wide receiver position, was the number one receiver in Jacksonville for about two to three years. The Jags selected a punter again in the fourth round. I don't know what it's up with the Jags in drafting punters, but they drafted Adam Podlish in the fourth round, along with Brian Smith, a defensive end. Uchiwaneri, who was a depth offensive lineman for a long time in Jacksonville, was selected in the fifth round, and then after that, really no notable players. So Reggie Nelson, Justin Durant, Mike Sims-Walker, those are three pretty solid picks, but definitely not elite picks, and that's why I have them so low on this list. 2012. In 2012, the Jags were on top of the world, taking number one wide receiver prospect, Justin Blackman and though that didn't work out Blackman definitely showed waves of potential and that's why I wanted to put this a little lower on the list because he did show those waves of potential and he had all the potential in the world to be a solid wide receiver for the Jags and for a long time at that just his alcoholism you know his addiction that prevented him from being a better player and then the second round they selected Andre Branch and Andre Branch was a great pass rusher for us uh, during the dark years of Jaguar football he was kind of Yannick Ngakwe before Yannick Ngakwe was Yannick Ngakwe you know he was getting after the quarterbacks you know stripping the ball out Andre Branch was a bright spot in a very dark time in Jaguar football and then again would you imagine that a punter in the third round the legendary story of how the Jags drafted a punter over Russell Wilson Brian Anger in the third round Brandon Marshall was still a solid linebacker in today's NFL in the fifth round Mike Harris and Jarris Pendleton. So again, I didn't have these guys so low because I thought Justin Blackman had a high, high ceiling and a lot of potential. So I didn't want to rank him too low, but again, didn't want to rank him too high because again, you drafted a guy with some drug problems and you drafted a punter in the third round. And for that, it's not too forgiving. 2000. In 2000, the Jags had a very similar situation to the year they drafted Justin Blackman. They drafted a young wide receiver that could not stay out of trouble, though. R.J. Suwar never showed the potential that Justin Blackman did. In fact, I don't believe he played more than six games, or he may not even have played. He played in 13 games, and he didn't really shine as much as he should have, but one thing that saved this draft was the draft of an absolute Jaguar legend at the center position, Brad Meester. He's in the pride of the Jaguars, an all-around great player and an all-around true Jaguar goat. So with that being said, that's going to bump this list up just a little bit. But after that, no one really noticeable. You got TJ Slaughter, Joey Chestas, uh, Kawaki Thompson, Emmanuel Smith, Eric Olsen, Rob Meyer, Shiron Smith, Danny Clark, and Mark Banowicz. They actually had one, two, three, four, five, five seventh round selections. I don't know what was happening there for the Jags, but getting five seventh round selections, but not ending on all of them, that's not necessarily a bad a bad thing. So, I mean, it's the seventh round. You can't expect to strike gold every time you go to the podium. So, like I said, Brad Meester saves his draft class just a wee wee bit. But again, RJ Seward, another wide receiver that never quite met his full potential with the Jaguars. 2008. In retrospect, uh, prior to me making this list and prior to me really reading these names out loud, 2008 should be probably the second worst draft class in Jaguar history. I'm going to say that's what it is, but in the case that I have to go to work and I'm not going to remake this whole entire list, 2008 comes in at this spot. No hits. No hits. 2008, 
Again, I should have ranked a lot lower, and I completely understand that if you get a little frustrated in the comments section. Because that was the year we drafted Derek Harvey, Quentin Groves, Thomas Williams, Trey Wa Williams, and Chauncey Washington. Do you know any of those guys? I mean, if you're a Florida fan or if you're a Jags fan, I'm sure you remember Derek Harvey. But as far as his impact on the field... He was not memorable in the absolute slightest. So 2008, though now it's ranked a little higher than some draft classes I mentioned before, if I had to go back and rewrite this list and remake this video, I would definitely put it near the top of the worst draft classes of all time. 2018. This is an unproven draft class that could skyrocket higher in the later years. However, as of right now, they were all in their rookie season, and you can't really place them too high on the list. Due to injury, a lot of these rookies actually seen playing time. Taven Bryan, the first round, he only got one sack this season, but hopefully when he goes back to his more natural position at the defensive tackle spot, he will perform. We also got DJ Chark in the second round, though he kind of didn't have a great 2017 season. I think he's poised to come back and have a very solid 2018. The third round we drafted now starting safety Ronnie Harrison, who I think is going to be a stud and a future of this Jaguar defense. They then drafted Will Richardson, who is going to be competing for a starting job this year. Tanner Lee, Leon Jacobs, who saw some some playing time last year. And of course, the starting punter. The Jags again drafting a punter. Logan Cook in the seventh round, who is a starter as well. So these are a lot of young guys that when we look back at this draft class, I think we'll realize that they made a lot of impact, especially uh, looking on from now four years on, three years on from this year, the next year, and the year after that. Seeing how these rookies develop and seeing how well they play together, because I think this we could look back on this one and say this was a really, really solid draft class. 1997. Ronaldo Wynn isn't necessarily a guy that is talked about too much uh, for the Jags, but he is a solid, solid player in one of the better defense events in Jaguar history. He doesn't get a lot of uh, name recognition. He doesn't get a whole lot of anything, but he was a very, very solid piece to this team. They also selected Mike Logan, the defensive back in the second round, James Hamilton in the third round, Seth Payne, who is a solid defensive tackle for a couple of years uh, with the Jaguars, Damon Jones, Damian Shelton, and John Hesse in the seventh round. 1997 was the definition of an average draft class for the Jags and something they should strive to do every season. 1995. In 1995, the Jaguars drafted future Hall of Famer Tony Baselli and definitely probably the best offensive lineman, definitely the best offensive lineman, and definitely one of the best players in Jaguar history. And that's all you can ask for is when you draft a guy like that. That's going to just take your franchise to the next level and be there with you for all the highs and all the lows. And that is exactly what Tony Baselli did for the organization. The Jags also snugged James Stewart in the first round as well, running back, who was really Fred Taylor before Fred Taylor was Fred Taylor. He was a good, elusive running back, but when Fred Taylor kind of came along, he took the reins and made sure he was the running back. Other draft picks in the 1995 draft include Brian DeMarco, Brian Schwartz, Chris Hudson, Rob Johnson, who saw some time at quarterback, Mike Thompson, Ryan Christopherson, Marcus Price, and Curtis Marsh. This is a very, very solid draft class to start the Jaguars organization. 2005. This is another draft class pick where the slot I have in it. If you haven't noticed, I haven't been saying numbers really. The title is going to be ranked from worst to best. But just know that my work schedule is fucked and I have to, like, work a lot. So, you know, it's not worth me going back and changing the order of things, but just know, disclaimer, if I had to reorder it, 2005 would be way lower on this list and definitely not ahead of the 1995 draft. This was a mistake on my part, but I'm still going to go over it because, you know, you guys will be in the comments saying I forgot 2005, but I'm going to assure you I did not forget, but I definitely have them ranked a lot higher than what I would have them ranked. Everything else from here on out is definitely what I think the Jags' uh, best draft classes are from here on out, definitely. My top 10 is definitely my top 10. We're in at number 13 right now with 2005. Again, if I had another opportunity, I cannot stress this enough, I would rank this a lot lower than what I have it at. So in 2005, 
2005, the Jags selected Matt Jones, who was a wide receiver who, could again, could not stay out of trouble. That's a common theme for the Jags drafting wide receivers that can't stay out of trouble. And Matt Jones was another one of those guys. And then just after that, man, not a lot of notable players on this team. You had Khalif Barnes, a tackle, Scott Starks, Alvin Pierman, Gerald Sensabaugh, um... Chad Owens, Pat Thompson, and Chris Robertson. So, again, this is not a great draft class by any means. Kind of a bad draft class. But, again, I definitely did not mean to have this so high. But thought I'd touch on it still because I can't just ignore the fact that I forgot about 2005. So, forgive me in advance for having this so high. I, again, did not mean for it to be so high. So, Please, please love me. Please subscribe. I mean, if you're this far in the video, you might as well subscribe. Excellent content. Really raw, too. So, you know, I'm telling you I made the mistake. So, you know, I think that definitely deserves your support. Hit that subscribe button. 2015. In 2015, the Jaguars selected Dante Fowler with their first round selection. Dante Fowler, though he's no longer with the Jags, is going to continue to have a great career. He did well with the Rams his first half season with them, and in a full season, he is going to play extremely, extremely well. Dante Fowler is a terrific edge rusher. I don't care what you guys say. He came in off the bench and had eight sacks. This guy is a monster. He's a beast and was a solid first round selection when I did not want him. TJ Yeldon, the second round, another very solid running back that I think is going to have a good career. He just got picked up by the Buffalo Bills, and I think he's going to continue to develop and continue to perfect his game and be a really, really good running back, especially in Buffalo in the system because, you know, Shady's going to get hurt, so TJ Yeldon will be right in there to bounce up and show his skills. AJ Can, who's been a guard for a really long time for us, whether you hate him, whether you love him, he's shown flashes of potential, but lately has been kind of slacking. I still think that was a decent pick. You had James Sample, who kind of came in at safety every once in a while. Rashad Green, LOL. Michael Bennett, Neil Sterling, Ben Koyak, who is still on the team and has one of the most memorable moments in Jaguar playoff history, catching that touchdown pass from Blake Bortles. You guys might not agree with me having him so high, but this is one that I do feel strongly about and definitely will defend. So 2015 definitely earns its right where it is in this order. 2017. Now you guys might be in the comment section down below saying 2017, it's a little early to rank these guys here, and Leonard Fournette keeps getting in trouble, Leonard Fournette keeps getting injured, Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette's not the only guy that the Jags selected in this draft that has made an impact on the team or will continue to make an impact on the team for years to come. They snagged up Cam Robinson, who is going to be a franchise left tackle for the Jaguars, and he is a very, very solid player and will be for a long time. Unfortunately, that injury prevented him from playing this year. So Cam Robinson's a guy I have a lot of hope in and I think has a lot of potential. So he's going to be around for a while, and he's going to be a very solid left tackle for us for a while. So Cam Robinson, a good selection. Dewan A. Smoot, who's going to come in in the rotation at the defensive end this year, and you're really going to see what this kid's all about because he didn't have a lot of regular season playing time in the past. D.D. Westbrook, who is going to be our number one wide receiver next year, alongside Marquise Lee. He's a big playmaker. Blair Brown, Jalen Myrick, and Marquez Williams were the other selections in 2017. So say what you want about Leonard Fournette and how you feel about him. I still think he's a great running back. And with the addition of Cam Robinson and D.D. Westbrook in this draft as well, this is one of the better drafts that the Jags have hit on. And yes, it was during the Dave Caldwell era. 2004. In 2004, the Jaguars selected Reggie Williams with their first round selection, and he was a pretty alright solid wide receiver for a couple of years for the Jags, so a decent get there in the first round. Then they got legendary linebacker in Jaguar history, Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith held it down for the Jags at the linebacker position for a while, I believe five, six years. Mm. He held that position down, and then of course the best fullback in Jaguar history, Greg Jones got selected in the third round as a running back. Ernest Wilford got selected in the first fourth round who's another decent wide receiver that the Jags had he's now a police officer in the Jacksonville area right now and of course Josh Scobie so instead of a punter we drafted a kicker in 2004 and the all-time point score in Jaguar history and this is one of the most solid all-around drafts that the Jags have had really answered a lot of positions of need and answered it with a lot of players that were around the franchise for a long long time 2009 
In 2009, the Jags drafted a lot of underrated talent by the fans and a lot of people that not a lot of Jags fans really talk about anymore, but guys that contributed. Eugene Monroe, who was a very solid left tackle for the Jags, and he ended up going to Baltimore after that and then dropping out of Baltimore to be a weed advocate, but Eugene Monroe was one of the more solid left tackles that the Jags have had. Of course, post Boselli, the Jags were really trying to find an answer at that position. They found it with Eugene Monroe, didn't really find the money that he was looking for here in Jacksonville, so he bounced. And then they drafted Terrence Knighton as well, who's a very solid uh, defensive tackle, not only for us, but for Denver, for Washington, had a lot of solid seasons uh, in the NFL. Derek Cox, who was our number one corner for a time, Pairing up with Rasheen Mathis, that was a really good duo. It was kind of the Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye before Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye. So that was a solid corner duo, and uh, Derek Cox participated in that. Mike Thomas, one of the most iconic moments in Jaguar history, featured Mike Thomas. Jarrett Dillard, another wide receiver. Zach Miller, a tight end that kind of stuck around for a while. Rashad Jennings, who was a very solid running back that came in when uh, Maurice Jones-Drew got hurt, and he ended up having a couple more solid years uh, with the New York Giants. And Taquan Underwood, who is a very, very good special teamer. So this was not necessarily the most stacked, iconic Jaguar draft, but a lot of solid pieces that gave the team what they needed as far as that goes. 2000. In two, in 2002, this is a more of an underrated draft class, really carried by two guys that were solid pieces to the Jaguar puzzle, and one guy that got cut down too short. His career kind of got cut too short from the Jags, and that guy is David Garrard, a fourth-round selection from the University of East Carolina. He came in in relief of Byron Leftwich, and he played well, led the Jags to one playoff series, and then just out of nowhere just got cut by the team, and they moved on to Blaine Gabbert, which you all know that the Jags ended up winning their Super Bowl with Blaine Gabbert with the best secondary in the league with Jonathan Cyprian and Alan Ball playing corners, so you know, you know how that goes. Uh, so it was a good idea to move on from David Garrard because the Blaine Gabbard experience worked. So, And then John Henderson, who is probably the best defensive tackle in Jaguar history, he held it down there for a long, long time. He's an icon in the Jacksonville area and an icon to fans everywhere, and he was what made this draft class crack in the top ten. 2003. In 2003, the Jags drafted an icon for the Jags, and he was a player that played for a really long time, and a guy that Jags fans still talk about today as the best corner in Jaguar history. And they, a lot of people are still going to say Jalen Ramsey is, but as far as experience, work rate, and things that they have done for the organization, that honor goes to the Jags' second-round selection in 2003, Rasheen Mathis. I'm a little biased because Rasheen Mathis is one of my favorite players of all time. They also drafted one of my other favorite Jaguars of all time, the guy that got me into Jaguar football, Byron Leftwich, in the first round. So you guys can hate on me in the comments saying this wasn't a great draft class. They just drafted Rasheen because, you know, Byron was trash. But this is my list, and my list is these are two icons that really helped me become a Jaguar fan, and they got drafted in the same draft class. So that's cool on me, and that's why they're ranked so high on my list. 2014 and no 2014 is not ranked this high simply because of Blake Bortles the boat the best there ever was the best Jaguar quarterback of all time the boat himself was the first round selection for the Jags no 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 it's not just because of that it's more about the later rounds that Dave Caldwell hit on something that he's kind of been famous to do now is hit on the later rounds so we did select Blake Bortles in the first round we did select our number one wide receiver now Marquise Lee in the second round tag team that with Allen Robinson who had over a thousand yards and was the first Jaguar receiver to reach over a thousand yards since Jimmy Smith and he's a guy that's going to have a terrific NFL career he's going to dominate for years to come he did well with Chicago go his first season there and he's only going to get better and become you know even more of an elite wide receiver in today's game we also drafted Brandon Linder who's going to be a you know a rock for our offensive line for time and time to come in the third round as a center Aaron Colvin who is going to be a lockdown corner for years to come whether he's going to keep on playing the nickel corner or if he's going to be a main corner uh, in Houston so that is going to be a very solid uh, pickup there and then Telvin Smith Talvin Smith, who is currently, you know, being talked about as, 
you know, trade rumors, but he's a great linebacker, one of the best linebackers in the league, and the Jags were able to snatch him up in the fifth round. And then, you know, other Chris Smith, a defensive end that spent some time here, Luke Buenko, a center who ended up trading to the Ravens, and I think he's holding it down there pretty well. And then Storm Johnson, a running back in the seventh round. As far as later rounds and players that they hit on that are becoming franchise cornerstones, 2014 is a memorable draft for that reason alone. 2006. You want to talk about drafting two absolute franchise legends. Two guys that spent almost the entirety of their career with the Jaguars and dedicated all their time to the organization that gave them a chance via the NFL draft. You're talking about the 2006 draft class where the Jags drafted Mercedes Lewis, the longest tenure Jag for a long, long time. I believe he was in 12 years by the time he left the team, and he's definitely going to come back and retire with us. And then you selected, of course, the man himself, Maurice Jones drew the one the best running back in Jaguar history uh, behind Fred Taylor and you know when you're going up against a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame and you're another guy that could probably make it to the Hall of Fame you know it's, it's, it's a debate you know you could say MJD is the best running back in Jaguar history I'm personally on the side of Fred Taylor but Maurice Jones drew definitely can make a case. Uh, for that, especially for what he did for this organization when it was going downhill. He won a rushing title in 2011 when the Jags went 5-11, and and these two alone in the first and the second round just make this draft class memorable, makes it legendary, and it makes it one of the best in Jaguar history. 1996. In 1996, the Jaguars drafted a lot of Jaguar mainstays for the 90s to the early 2000s. In the first year, they selected, the first round, um, excuse me, they selected Kevin Hardy, a linebacker who spent a lot of years in Jacksonville. It was an all right piece. He was a solid linebacker for the team. Tony Brackens, who's one of the best uh, defensive ends in Jaguar history. People still talk about him today as being the benchmark of what a true good defensive end is for the Jaguars organization. He's still talked about Michael Cheever, the center. Aaron Beasley, who is a former first-team All-Pro and a pro bowler at the corner position. He held it down. He was very, very solid. And in 1996, they selected three May stays for the Jaguar organization in the late 90s with Hardy, Brackens, and Beasley, and you could not ask for a better trio than the trio they got in the 1996 draft. 1998. In 1998, this was the year the Jags drafted, in my opinion, the best player they've ever had, Fred Taylor, in the first round, and then another first round selection, one of the best DBs the Jags have ever had, Donovan Darius, one of the hardest hitting safeties in Jaguar history. He would lay people out across the middle. He was also athletic, and they definitely were a big part of the Jaguars' success in the 90s and the early 2000s was Donovan Darius and Fred Taylor's career. Those two in the first round were mighty, mighty steals and two guys that really defined an era of a franchise. Donovan Darius and Fred Taylor back-to-back in the first round. You could not ask for much more than that. Other picks, Cordell Taylor, Jonathan Quinn, who's one of the best backup quarterbacks in Jaguar history, stepped in and won a couple of games. Uh, John Wade, Lamar Zer Williams, Kevin McLeod, Alvis Whitlid, and Brandon Tolbert, but Fred Taylor, Donovan Darius, and even Jonathan Quinn is really the story of the 1998 draft. It's kind of like with Mercedes Lewis and Maurice Jones-Drew, you drafted those two cornerstones. Well, in 98, they drafted Fred Taylor and Donovan Darius, who are both also definitely cornerstones of the Jaguars organization. And finally, the best draft class in Jaguar history. At me if you want, all you want, 2000. In 16. 2016 is the best draft class the Jaguars ever had, regardless if these three guys stick around for the long haul or not. You got Jalen Ramsey, who is the best corner in the NFL. He is having some trouble with the front office and not agreeing with them, but he is still great. And if the Jags are smart, they're going to ask Jalen how many zeros that they want him to write on that check, and they will write that many zeros on that check because he is important to the organization he's already 
Him and Rasheen Mathis, man, they're right here. Rasheen Mathis obviously played a lot longer. But Jalen Ramsey with his intangibles, pure raw skills and ability, he's definitely going to go down as the best corner in Jaguar history. And you also got Miles Jack in the second round. That's a guy I don't think is going to end up spending his career in Jacksonville because the Jags don't really have the money to pay him that because the other guy we're going to talk about is going to want a lot of money as well. And he's kind of outplayed him in that aspect. But Miles Jack is a guy that whether he's going to be with the Jags or not, he's going to be an elite linebacker for years to come. But, you know, if Telvin Smith does get traded, then Miles Jack I could see coming in, filling that void, the Telvin Smith void, and, you know, the Jags paying him and making sure that he's going to be a part of this franchise for a long, long time to help me, you know, defend the fact that 2016 is the best draft class that the Jags ever had. And then in the third round, they selected Yannick Ngakwe, who's already third all-time in sacks in Jaguar history. Yes, I said that correctly. Third all-time in sacks in Jaguar history, and he got drafted in 2016. That was literally three years ago. That was literally three years ago. He's already racked up 29 and a half sacks in three years. This guy is dominant and is one of the best edge rushers in the league, and he's going to want a big payday, and the Jags are going to pay him as well. Hopefully they can keep Ramsey and Yan on the same team because this is a legendary draft class and one that only happens once in a generation. Other selections in here, you had Sheldon Day. Sheldon Day, who is a solid defensive tackle uh, in the middle. You know, we ended up shipping him, and I don't think he's playing for anybody else, but he was all right. Tyron Holmes, Brandon Allen, and Jonathan watered the defensive end so after that the fourth sixth seventh round they didn't really hit on a lot of them but these first three rounds were hit 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 and they are cornerstones corner cornerstones of the jaguar history and that is why 2016 is the best draft class the jags have ever had and that was me ranking all the Jaguars draft classes from worst to best. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Debs are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.